Hello all, it's the 29th of September 2016 and it's Dan here from Essex United Kingdom. So the temperatures are still holding out, high teens, early 20s, which is quite good for this time of year here in the UK. So it's allowing things to keep growing and do quite well. What I thought I'd do today, just give you a little tour of the allotment, because I don't think I've done an allotment video lately. So I'll show you what we've got here. So this is, a uh, most of my long-term viewers will know, this is the brassica cage. And what we've got here, is some cabbages all set like that just so you can see so these should be ready for early next summer all being well provided the slugs don't get in there and completely devastate them now the brassicas are all good it's a cabbage here you can see that one and as we go further over to here, I've got to, got to clear my throat, excuse me. <coughs> so this is kale. You can see just how good that is. I'll just try and zoom in for you. Of course, very nutritious thing to grow kale. It's completely hardy here in the UK. I mean, I remember that, uh, I believe it was 2010, the temperature went down to about minus 13, and we were growing kale, and it was still doing well. I don't know if there's anyone out there who lives in a colder climate such as parts of Canada etc watching this but uh, let me know if you can grow kale successfully in your area this is purple sprouting broccoli this is really is a great thing to grow this in the spring covers the hungry gap and what it does is puts up little purple sort of spears and they're the things that you eat nice sort of taste to them and then afterwards, when they're done, I like to eat the leaves. And um, if you keep picking them, it'll keep uh, cropping. So certainly a heavy cropper and a great thing to grow. But once again, you must protect them because pigeons and cabbage butterflies love them and really will destroy your crop if given the chance. So here we go, more cabbage. Not particularly great specimens, but uh, you know, starting to heart up there. So it's cabbage nonetheless. Do well. And now this is a thing that we like to do here. So, you see, a lot of people have got this obsession that everything has to be 100% tidy and regimented in nice little rows without uh, any sort of unsightly things in sight. And I believe that can be a mistake. So, you see here, we like to compost nearly everything. So, you've got the old uh, sweet corn plants here. You've got just old leaves, cabbage leaves and everything all chucked on here. And this will later on be covered and used to enrich the soil of the allotment once this turns into proper compost. Okay, so with regards to covering things so that you don't get weeds growing too much, is several things you can use. Now I'll just show you one of the best things you can use here. And this is a pond liner. Now, if you can somehow get hold of a pond liner, preferably for free, you really should try and utilise it because, you know, no light gets through this, no moisture gets through this for obvious reasons because it's a pond liner, and this is a hole, of course, but that's uh, by the by, and it's great. Now, under here we've got old bits of rhubarb, old leaves of brassicas, any weeds, any waste at all, green waste, chuck it under one of these here and the worms and the bits and bobs in the soil will all take it down in for you. All you've got to do is keep it covered and of course no weeds will grow and then next year this will be sort of free for setting, even maybe later this year with some broad beans or something like that. So pond liner try and get hold of one or indeed more than one if you can okay so this is the rhubarb more or less all done by now had so much rhubarb this year truly truly unbelievable volumes of it okay so what I'm gonna do now is show you some beds now these are raised beds and in here is good nutritious growing medium all cooking away ready for setting either later this year or next year oh look mice 
don't know if you guys saw that, but uh, anyway, so there's mice under there. Not particularly a thing that I want to encourage, really, but uh, I suppose this is nature and we can't do too much with this. And this one here, let's have a look. All well and truly covered over. Got bricks on it, so it doesn't uh, blow away. Now look at that. That truly is brilliant growing medium so you see them worms there they're all working away so in here we've got wood loud wood lice look at that now what we've got here is sort of good old-fashioned vegetables you know waste from the allotment green waste such as cabbage leaves etc etc chucked on there you got manure in here there was also a bit of cardboard in here all being worked in now this soil will be so nutritious for growth unbelievable far better than this artificially fertilized overused soil that uh, people seem obsessed with nowadays because you really have got to think about with an allotment putting back not just taking you know all life is like that really in my opinion but uh, that's a subject for uh, another video but look there a bit of manure on the top cardboard over the old growing medium from last year or this year that's one way you can enrich it so put your cardboard down and then chuck your manure and chuck your sort of rotting matter on top and that will then work into the soil over the winter period and then you'll have far better soil you know for it without the need to go and chuck a load of artificial fertilizer on it which you know there is a place for this sort of thing but uh, not too much of a place, eh? So here we go, this is another way you can enrich your soil. So this is a raised bed, I'll just show you how it's made. So that's just like a bit of two by three in the ground with your bits of wood screwed to it. Very simple design. So this is a good time of year to enrich your soil. So You've got a bay like this, say, just a, a raised bed you don't know what to do with. Okay, fine. And you've got a load of waste matter, chuck it on top and leave it. And you can more or less guarantee that the frosts, the worms, microorganisms will work this all in and your soil will be far, far better for it next year. Okay, so here we are, we're down the newer allotment, or the more recently taken on allotment, as we should say. Let's just show you what we've got going on here. Once again, more enrichment ha happening here, and you can see we've got grass cuttings, a bit of this fern stuff, leaves, all chucked here, looking very unsightly, I agree, or very natural, depending on what your opinion is. And I'm going to be covering this with some carpet soon and this will then proceed to enrich the soil. Now these are doing okay. You remember I put these in, just some bushes, starting to go dormant now. These are black currants. And over here, we've got the gooseberries, once again starting to go dormant. Not gonna be long before them leaves all fall off. And a bit more enrichment here. I'll just show you what we got underneath this carpet. There we go. Just some leaves, it's quite warm under there. All going to be cooking away. Cardboard again, we've got a bath here. Might make a worm bin out of this or something like that. And we've got some manure over here underneath this carpet. So basically the allotment is getting enriched pretty well. Building, adding nutrients to the soil in order for huge and heavy crops next year all being well take care hope all my viewers are doing well and speak soon